G'day guys, it's Stas here with another video brought to you by Beerco. Today, we're going to be talking about the increasingly popular topic of low or no alcohol beer. There are a number of different reasons why people might be looking for low or no alcohol beer. Perhaps you're looking for a healthier choice of beverage, but still love those beery flavors. As more and more women enjoy beer, having a low or no alcohol beer during pregnancy is something which is being requested more frequently. Or perhaps you're a designated driver for your friends and you don't want to be stuck drinking water, soft drink or tea and coffee. Commercial low no alcoholic beers are generally produced in two ways, through vacuum distillation and or membrane filtration. Both versions of these processes remove the alcohol but have downsides that accompany them. Membrane filtration and vacuum distillation have the potential to remove flavour when they remove the alcohol. Vacuum distillation also has the downside of essentially heating the beer up to remove the alcohol. Mm, cooked beer. From a home brewer's perspective, Neither of these commercial solutions are ideal as they require expensive, specialized machinery, which would be cost prohibitive on a much smaller scale. More recently, craft breweries have been experimenting with a number of alternative methods for creating low, no alcohol beers. Seeing as these are a little more approachable for the home brewer, we're going to have a look at some of these methods and discuss some considerations for making low or no ABV beer. Late last year, October 2020, Lullaman put out a best practices info sheet for making limited fermentability wort using high temperature mashing technique. Craft breweries are fairly familiar with the idea that mashing in the upper end of the sacrification range promotes the activity of enzymes that create longer chains, which are less fermentable sugars. This can result in the beer having a fuller mouth feel. Lullaman's info sheet talks about taking this to the extreme by mashing between 82 to 86 degrees. This process will essentially eliminate enzymes which would break down the longer chain sugars into shorter chain sugars, thus creating a wort which is much lower in fermentables but high in unfermentables. Lullamond recommend the following procedure. Mash well modified ale malt at, at an initial temperature between 82 and 86 C or 180 to 187 Fahrenheit. Target a low OG between 1020 and 1027. Lauder as normal, but ensure the pH and gravity remain within normal brewing levels. The pH should be within around 5.1 to 5.4, and some acid additions may be required. Boil as normal, again, being careful to maintain normal pH levels. It's also possible to add lactose at this stage to increase mouthfeel. Ferment using a maltotriose negative yeast strain such as Lalbrew Windsor or Lalbrew London to lower the potential alcohol yield. Fermentists have an alternative offering, a new yeast, Safbrew LA01. At the time of filming, it's only available in the commercial 500 gram packs, but you might be able to get your hands on one, like I've done. It should be here very soon. The approach with this yeast is similar to the previous approach, but it's also different. LA01 is a maltose and maltotriose negative yeast strain. This means it can only assimilate the simple sugars in the wort. This means that in a typical wort, the yeast can only consume 10 to 15% of the available sugars. Fermentus recommends that the following to create a low no ABV alcohol beer, i.e. less than 0.5%. The standard mash regime aiming for uh, 1028 to 1032, seven to eight degrees Plato for your OG. The attenuation is calculated at around 13 to 15%. You can influence the flavor profile by fermenting it cooler to create a more lager-like profile, but it's recommended keeping fermentations above 10 degrees Celsius. Due to the high amount of unfermented sugars still present in the finished beer, shelf stability is an issue. They do not recommend bottling these beers unless the beer has been pasteurized. So keg only for these ones. Let's say you wanted to brew a low, no alcohol beer. What are some of the things you might consider? Let's take a look at a recipe that I'm currently playing around with and we'll talk about my thoughts toward the processes and decisions that I've made. I've decided to use both approaches, 
Marlamund and Fermentus, seeing as I have access to both yeast types. I'm aiming to make a low, no alcohol version, as in less than 2% of my Phil's Wish IPA. And I want it to drink just like the original, or as much as I can. To try and achieve this, I'm going to try and compensate using the following techniques. I'm using flavorful malts. I could use Vienna or Munich there too, but I thought that I would keep the grain bill percentage and make up the same just to limit the variables. I'm cutting down my bittering edition and moving my 10 minute edition to a whirlpool at 90 degrees C. This is to try and avoid the stringency and keep the BU to GU ratio as close as I can to the original. The BU to GU ratio is, means the bittering units to gravity units. It's a ratio that generally speaking, as your ABV increases to balance that alcohol, you need a higher amount of um, bittering units. So if you have a low ABV beer, the perception of bitterness is going to be much higher. So that's what I'm doing there. To aim to compensate for the lack of body that the alcohol normally provides, uh, I'm going to adjust the water chemistry to increase the chlorides and have a higher chloride to sulfate ratio that's normally typical of a New England IPA. Just a note, I didn't want to add lactose or other non-fermentable sugars to try and uh, increase the mouthfeel. That's part of the reason why I'm personally interested in uh, brewing this low to no ABV beer is to cut down on the carbs. And it's kind of counterproductive if I'm trying to low, lower the amount of ABV, which has carbs in it by adding, and then adding a whole lot of sugar, which is even more carbs, just doesn't make sense to me. Lactose would fill out the mouthfeel, but adds more sugar and sweetness. If you want to add lactose, you could push the bitterness a little harder, maybe five to 10 IBUs as your perception of bitterness will be lowered due to the sweetness that comes from the lactose. So that's what I plan on brewing in the very near future. I think I'll also uh, do one with minor tweaks, better suited to the SAF Brew LA01, uh, taking into consideration their brewing recommendations. If you want to see how that brew day goes, I'll put a link uh, to that video either in a card up the top or in the description down below once that video is up on my channel, Stats Brewing. So that's pretty much it. Are you thinking of brewing a low to no alcohol beer? Did you find this video interesting and useful? Let us know in the comments down below. So until next time, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing with another video brought to you by Vieco. Until the next one, cheers.